Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator and Eastern Antique Arms. Now, I'm just about to ship off a sword to a customer and uh, in doing so, in going to get it and, and so on, um, I thought, hold on, this is a type of sword I've never really featured on my channel before. Now, you will notice that the hilt is somewhat familiar. If I just grab um, another sword that's right about me here, um, you'll notice the hilts are very, very similar. They're essentially the same pattern or model, that is the 1821 pattern three bar. Um, but rather than going into the specifics of the 1821 pattern, I wanted to talk about why are these two swords of different lengths? Well, um, on this channel, I have to say that I tend to feature quite a lot of officer's swords. But what this is, is possibly not an officer's sword, or is it? Let's have a look at it. So, first of all, what I wanted to say is, why do um, people like gunners and pioneers, why do they so often have short swords, and you'll see that this is a short bladed sword. Um, and you know, why, why is that the case? Why, why did they have shorter swords than officers, for example, or cavalry? Well, quite simply, it's because people like gunners and uh, pioneers, um, so pioneers were the people who kind of often prepared the, the area for gunners and, and build, you know, fix bridges and prepare roads and all this kind of stuff. Pioneers do all the useful stuff. Um, the equivalent um, in the modern world of, of perhaps uh, Royal Engineers or Logistical Corps, this kind of thing, um, uh, they would have pioneers within them as well as other uh, types of troops as well. And uh, gunners equally, well, the basic reason is that pioneers and gunners were essentially seen as workers, okay? So they were there to do almost a, not a mechanical, but a, a physical job, a, a sort of um, a manual labor job, should we say. So uh, whilst people who loaded and operated guns then and now could also be obviously quite educated because they needed to know all about their equipment, they needed to know about safety measures, they needed to know about traje trajectories and, and um, the actual you know ins and outs of how their machine worked. And with pioneers, they often needed to know very specific skills to do with perhaps carpentry or, um, or, or certain types of metal work. They were fundamentally doing a physical job. Now, the longer swords, that we often look at on this channel tend to um, split into two types. They're either cavalry swords, which obviously people riding horses need longer swords, or they're officer's swords. Now, fundamentally, officers are not workers. Officers are essentially management. Um, so for the most part, whilst they might get stuck in and they might help, they might take their stuff off, the main job of an officer is to command men. Um, so the manager doesn't necessarily go onto the uh, shop floor and actually do the selling themselves. They sort of command from above uh, from their office and much the same with officers. Um, they were there to uh, tell people what to do, to make sure things were done and in some circumstances to lead from the front. Um, and uh, often happened in the Victorian period to go hunting for glory and medals. Um, so the officer's sword, not only was it longer um, because they didn't need to do jobs, but also that was their primary weapon. Now I've spoken about this, in fact I haven't spoken about this for a long time, but I did cover it in some of my earlier videos when I started talking about this sort of era of weapon. And um, officers' swords are their primary weapon. Now that might seem wacky to lots of people in the age of gunpowder, uh, because you might think, well surely weren't guns their primary weapon if they had a revolver or a pistol, in some cases even a carbine or a rifle or a musket. Uh, but no, on paper, in Europe, in the 18th and 19th centuries, an officer's primary weapon was their weapon of self-defense, and that was their sword. Yes, indeed, they did often carry firearms, but remember that um, firearms, certainly before multi-shot firearms, before revolvers and such like came along, uh, uh, firearms were often one shot and in close range you might not have time to reload. Um, also, there was the fundamental view that an officer's job was not to be doing fighting, an officer's job was to be leading and commanding. And this was here as something for them to defend themselves with as a last ditch 
um, self-defense, matter of self-defense, um, at very, very close range. Therefore, firearms go a bit against that because firearms are a, a, a ranged weapon and they shouldn't be engaging the enemy at range. Their job at range was to be commanding their troops who would use their firearms. Um, so really, the reason that a hand weapon was so important for officers was because the only time in theory, on paper, officers should be doing any fighting is in last-ditch self-defense at point-blank range. Uh, in which case, until revolvers came along, and even for a period after the first revolvers came along, swords were uh, more useful, arguably, than firearms were. So coming back to the short sword, so let's just have a look at this specific example. This is actually a quite a rare beast, because this is a um, artillery gunner's sword, or is it? And the reason I say that is because whilst this is like a shortened version of the sword I just showed, it does actually have an etched and decorated blade. So um, etching was done with uh, acid and you would use a blocker, so something that the acid couldn't go through. In the modern world you can use something like a nail varnish for example. There are certain types of wax or other types of material you can apply to the blade and then you remove some and apply your acid and it only etches what isn't covered. So you can do fancy patterns on the blade and if you look on the Eastern Antique Arms website, which I'll put a link below of course, if you look at examples on there you can see close-ups of uh, blade decorative etching. Now that etching um, you don't get on all swords of that period and um, it often uh, tells you something about the particular regiment that that person was in. But generally speaking, blades with um, swords for people like gunners or um, cavalry troopers are usually plain bladed without decorative etching. If there's decorative etching, the usual rule, there are exceptions, the usual rule is that's an officer's weapon. So the question has to be is if this is an artillery gunner's sword, and that might be um, also backed up by this button here on the scale which I'll come to in a second. Why has it got an etched and decorated blade? And I also know that this example is service sharpened very extensively actually um, to a single bevel quite a fine edge. Um, so the question is who is this for? Well so my current working theory and I you know maybe some of you out there might disagree with this but my current theory is so this is an etched blade which has some of the characteristics of an officer's sword but it's a short sword which officers normally wouldn't have normally only gunners and and kind of like regular private soldiers would have short swords but the scabbard tells us something more as well and that has a button on it now if you notice the officer's sword has a pair of rings because officer's sword belts generally speaking um, at this date anyway not so much the case earlier but at this date generally are suspended by two slings from a sword belt if you have a sword which has a button on it here it's designed to be worn with a leather frog and a baldric. Now we know from photos of the Crimean War, for example, that uh, one group of people, well, we know that common you know, private soldiers did often wear this arrangement like they wore with their bayonets. So you'll find that same thing on bayonets. They had a, a, a frog stud going through the frog and mounted on a baldric or a, a, sometimes a waist belt for bayonets at least. Um, but apart from private soldiers, we know that another group of people that did wear their swords in the same way as the private soldiers were non-commissioned officers, NCOs, primarily sergeants. So my current working theory is that this is essentially represents a sword that is between a private soldier's short sword and an officer's sword. In other words, it is for an NCO, a non-commissioned officer, almost certainly in my view, a sergeant of some form, perhaps a staff sergeant, sergeant major, colour sergeant, this sort of thing. Um, and it has the artillery gunner's emblem etched on the blade for the Royal Artillery. Um, there's no maker's name on this. You'll notice also it has no um, brass proof slug in the base of the blade like officers' swords normally have. Although it's almost certainly been proved, it doesn't have that brass disc again, which is uh, particular to officers' swords. So my conclusion is that this is essentially a, let's call it a sergeant sword, an artillery sergeant sword. And often with sergeant swords of any branch of the service, be it artillery or um, cavalry or infantry, Royal Engineers, we often find with sergeant swords that they have characteristics of both the private's weapons 
and the officers' weapons, because of course non-commissioned officers sit in that middle ground, that connecting point between the privates and, and, the, um, and the officers. They are essentially non-commissioned officers. They don't hold a commission, but they are above the level um, of a normal private soldier. Um, so there we go. I hope that's covered a few interesting things. This is a particularly rare sword. This is sold now, going off to a customer. If you want to see uh, more swords for sale, obviously look at Eastern Antique Arms, link below. Um, a very interesting sword. I don't recall ever having one of these in my possession before. They are rare things and, uh, and very nice. And really the headline, I think, for this video is, number one, sergeant swords often carry the characteristics of both a private's weapon and an officer's weapon. And secondly, um, the fact that private soldiers and in some cases, non-commissioned officers, sergeants in this case, probably, um, have short uh, swords, shorter bladed swords, is for reasons of practicality. That if you're operating guns, if you're a pioneer, if you're doing this type of manual labor, you um, don't necessarily want a long blade getting in the way, firstly, and secondly, because this might not be your primary weapon anyway. Your primary weapon may well be the gun that you're operating or might be a firearm, whereas officers, their primary weapon is their sword. I hope that's been uh, useful and interesting to some of you. Please give me a like if you found this video interesting and a subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I've got extra videos on Patreon and as I say, if you want to have a look at some nice pictures of more antique swords, have a look at the link below. Thanks for watching folks and I'll see you soon for another video. Cheers! Thanks for watching, we've got extra videos on Patreon, please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks!